you very much for watching or listening today. Uh, today I have a very, very special guest who I've been excited to interview actually for a very long time. Um, and we've made this work today despite uh, quite a big time difference, so I'm very happy about that. Today's guest is a legendary Muay Thai fighter, bare knuckle fighter, and the first woman in history to win a title for World Lethweight Championship. She is the World Lethweight Championship female bantamweight champion. So today's guest, if you haven't guessed it already, Sori Manfredi, absolute legend of the fight game. And today we have quite a lot to talk about, including her fighting career, training, mentality to win, uh, let way headbutts, which I think many people are keen to know about, and a lot more. So as I said, um, thank you very much for making the time, Champ. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Hey, hi, everyone. And hi, Liam. Thank you very much for this interview, for this opportunity. I'm glad to be here with you. Thank you. Absolute pleasure, absolute pleasure. So thank you. So obviously uh, at the time of this interview, it's, it's not been long since uh, a very big fight for you in the Muay Thai world, actually a world title challenge, I believe. Uh, obviously the fight um, didn't go your way, but was competitive. And uh, I know it's not been long since the fight, but you've had a little bit of time to reflect. For the fans you know, around the world, can you share your reflections in terms of what went well with the fight? And also perhaps what went wrong and what didn't go your way, please. Sure, sure. Uh, I, being honest, it's been two weeks, uh, a bit less than two weeks since the fight happened. So uh, because of the deception, uh, it took me a bit of time to, you know, just uh, to be able to smile again. <laughs> I was very disappointed because I was really looking for this uh, WBC title. Well, um, I started to train back, but not anymore in Muay Thai. So I didn't have uh, yet the courage to, to watch the fight. But uh, I would say anyway, I think at that high level, the, the fight is always close. I mean, unless uh, there is a KO, the fight is always close. But uh, she did better in, uh, in, in the last uh, two rounds. So, um, I mean, I got a elbow on the last uh, uh, second of the third round, which really made me a bit da daisy, but uh, I managed to continue the fight, but it, uh, it, it took some energy uh, from, from my uh, fourth round, round. So um, it is a big uh, deception uh, for me, for my, obviously for my coach, so now I'm getting back to the track. I'm getting back to training, uh, but with different uh, goals because uh, this fight uh, two weeks ago was supposed to be more or less my last uh, Muay Thai uh, fight. So now I'm more um, looking for bare knuckle because I've been signing a contract for the BKFC, but in Asia, so for three fights. So um, right now I'm preparing for, for that new adventure. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. We will touch on, on the bare knuckle now in a moment because obviously that is growing okay. all over the world. Before we do, one more uh, Muay Thai question because obviously you've accomplished okay. so much okay. in that sport. Looking back on it, you, know, you mentioned that this yeah. fight uh, may well be your last one. What is your, your proudest moment? I know this is, this is a big question because you've had a lot of fights. But when you look back specifically on the, the Muay Thai side of things, is there one uh, particular fight or particular achievement that stands out for you as the one that you're most proud of or, or maybe more than one? Uh, not an easy question, but uh, let's say I don't, I don't think there is one fight that I'm more uh, happy or proud or something. I would say it has some fight fight. I was working hard on some point at the at the training, and when I was able to to do that during the fight, it was it was big for me. So always, it's not it's not really about um, who I fought or, or it was more about what is really, what was working during the training. Then for me, it was the the big win. So. I have few fights like that, but uh, <laughs> this is it. Sure, that makes sense. I understand. I just wanted to give it a mention because you know you you've achieved so many great things in that sport. Now, obviously, with the uh, the bare knuckle side of things going back there, 
Uh, this sport is getting bigger and bigger. Uh, I know obviously you had a fantastic win, vicious knockout on the, uh, the Bare Knuckle Kingdom show as well. But what was it specifically that attracted you uh, to try um, Bare Knuckle itself? Um, what was it that originally drew you to, to that as a, as a challenge uh, for yourself personally? Mm -hmm. Uh, but as you mentioned before, I, I used to fight in Letway and I'm also really looking for in the future fighting more in Letway. But because of what happened in, in uh, Myanmar with the, um, like the, oh, how can I say that? It's not a revolution yet. <laughs> it's like uh, what the big uh, army um, uh, who destroy everything. <laughs> so it's yes. kind of complicated. Uh, sorry? Mm -hmm. It's like uh, like a coup, isn't it, with the government? They've sort yeah, of overthrown yeah. the government. Yes, yes, I know. Yeah. Difficult situation. Completely. And they, they completely closed the country. They, they shut down as well uh, all the social media. So it was really hard to get, like, proper information. So, of course, the, the WLC, uh, the Latvian organization, the main one, uh, did not organize any fight. And uh, I'm not sure they're going to be able to... To make a more uh, let way fight in the future because it's still the coup is still going on so it's kind of hard to know but anyway it was just like a uh I, i'm really looking for in the future because uh let way is my favorite um my favorite uh boxing uh sport martial art or whatever yeah. <laughs> so so because uh i i knew like how it is to fight without gloves um and I had also a care track fight with uh, gloves uh, instead of the instead of the gloves. Um, when when um, when the organization proposed me, uh, do you want to fight in Bernac in Bernacle? I say yeah, yeah, I want to try. Uh, boxing uh, was always a big thing for me. Like uh, it stressed me a little bit because it's yeah, it's it's big. So I say yeah, well you know. I, let's try it and uh it goes well so when bkfc asia invited me and said do you want to do you want to be part of uh, of this new new things in asia i say yeah yeah definitely i want to try i like this amazing well i know obviously you've already had some good wins in there now but there's some big big fights out there for you so i know uh, i speak for myself and, and fight fans everywhere when we're very excited, um, you know, to see you fight more in bare knuckle. Now, obviously, uh, touching on the the left way side of things, um, an incredible achievement because you've made history with this being the first female champion in uh, world left way uh, championship history. So, talking about that fight itself and the achievement of making history, uh, people often talk about the fight itself, but I'm curious as to when you won. Uh, the fight and you realized that you'd made history and you'd become the world champion, world bantamweight champion and so forth. What does it feel like? I mean, in, in a moment like that, what are the emotions that you experience? So, yeah, uh, on the moment here, yeah, of course, um, when, uh, when, uh, when the fight was over uh, because she couldn't continue uh, on the fourth round, uh, I was like, yeah, this, this is it. I made it. So I look at my corner, I made, I'm at my coach and, uh, and I was really like relieved and somehow like, yeah, we did it. So <laughs> what's next now? <laughs> so yeah, we work together. Whatever we do is uh, uh, some release when it's done and then we are thinking about the next, uh, the next things. So, but uh, I, of course I was... Uh, super happy it was there is nowhere to describe that but uh yeah <laughs> and i was happy because you know the traditional roles of let way is um is you can't win uh, if if there isn't any ko so it was also something big because wlc make the more like a um, european standard or yeah for the fight like five rounds to uh, three minutes but normally it's like 20 minutes and uh, you are allowed to knock out your opponent two times. So it was something who made more sense to me uh, because I won the fight by uh, TKO. Like she couldn't continue. 
So I was like, yeah. So I, I, I did want that, uh, that title on the proper way of uh, Letway. So I was even more happy, if that makes incredible. sense. It does make total sense and an absolutely incredible achievement and uh, obviously a historical achievement as well. Now, I think a lot of people are curious, um, as they just with the last couple of questions now, I think a lot of people are curious with uh, the headbutts side of things. Now, I know you've spoken about this before. Uh, I saw an interview you gave with Shirtov, I believe you're talking about headbutts. But a lot of people are, are fascinated um, by this side of things, especially the training. So how do you train for quite a unique striking technique like a headbutt? Uh, how does that work, please, if you could share a little bit about it? Um... So my, my trainer did study a lot, like uh, some video that he was able to find about how the Myanmar people, how the real literary fighter are doing things. So we were observing, first of all, how to land like a proper headbutt, because obviously if you don't throw correctly your, your head, you're just going to open up your face. So it was like part of the things to understand how to to land the proper headbutt. So, and then we work on the little pads, like uh, on the on the wall. I had to work uh, on different angle on the clinch, obviously, but it's not something that you can really practice with someone because, uh, first of all, it's painful, and second of all, you can really cut your uh, your partner. So it's more like you you do on the pads or on the on the target on the wall. And yeah, for fun, we, I was opening coconut with my head, but it was just for fun, you know, just, we did it a few times, but it, it was more to make like funny videos. <laughs> this is it. Wow, coconuts. Okay, that's something you don't hear every day, but uh, they're very cool, <laughs> very cool way of, <laughs> of practicing. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> Very good. So, yeah, like I say, I think it's something, you know, it just fascinates people um, a great deal because obviously not being in, in other sports with the headbutts. So the last couple of things, as I mentioned, um, obviously you fought around the world, but particularly in Thailand, there is obviously a, lot, a long cultural history, a long spiritual history um, with fights and with combat, obviously with left way the same uh, in Myanmar, you know, very, very long cultural history and so on. So, with yourself personally, what are your thoughts? And, and I know this is another big-ish question, so I'm sorry. But your thoughts on, on the spiritual or um, the cultural aspects of fighting? Because obviously in the West, you know, it, it's not necessarily the same. Um, there, there's not necessarily always the long, long, long traditions, you know, hundreds of years. And, uh, you know, the royal families being involved as they are in Muay Thai and, and this, that and the other. So, you know, your reflections on that, in, in terms of when you fight, are there any... Um, rituals and things that you that you honor that you go through uh, on the build up to a fight or anything in that aspect as I say I know this is a big one but it's, it's again it's something that's a little different that I think people in the west don't really see and don't really know about so I'm just wondering if there's anything you could share um, about the history about the spirituality and what that means to you uh, with left way uh, or Muay Thai, by the way, it, 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 with either sport, with Muay Thai or with left way, I, I, you know. Uh, about left way, I, I can't really say because I'm sure it has like a huge, huge uh, ritual and story behind. But the thing is, yeah. I always, um, I used to live in Thailand since uh, more than four years. So mm. I used to fight only in, in Myanmar for the, for the left way fight. So I, I did not train over there. So... I did not have the chance, you know, to meet like um, or to go to a camp in Myanmar to to see because I'm sure it's different than Thailand, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I wanted to go more, a bit more to understand more, then they they completely closed the the country. So it's like mm -hmm. we'll see, we'll see. So I can't really say about Letway, but obviously it's kind of similar you know in thailand uh, you you have a, a certain yeah a certain spirituality behind the uh, behind few things uh, for the fight but uh, i'm training with a french uh, french coach mm -hmm. since more than four years yeah. and uh, he, he has his belief on it i do not have those belief so i kind of make my own way but uh, you know we have normally you make this uh, way cool in Thailand, like, uh, you know, just before the fight, you you kind of dance, which is like a way to 
to thank your your camp your trainer it's obviously also to to continue to stretch and to prepare yourself i do not do it because i don't feel the need of doing this but uh the monkan normally it's like a, a priest who do this or do some um some uh how to say uh prayer on a, on it mm -hmm. i did it with my brother i asked him to build it for me we did like all little uh, ritual together because you believe on things so i like this idea that you can work if you know what i if you understand what i mean mm -hmm. so yes. i do not do any work but uh, i know what my my trainer is telling me when thing that i don't really understand because uh yeah you know same for the monk on i really enjoy the fact that my brother did it we did some or ritual and it's you know with my with my family with my brother so to me it make more sense than going to a temple with people that i don't know make i'm sure they they put a lot of power on it but it's completely different if you can do with your own uh, own uh, own force so yeah mm. i'm sense. sorry i cannot really understand answer like um uh, with the Thai culture, no. because I always felt like it's not mine, it's not my culture. I'm not gonna pretend because I'm living in Thailand only because it's very like even for me, make more sense to put things with my belief on. Sure, it makes sense, but um, but no, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, everything you said makes makes much sense there, and it's a good insight because again, I I try and get into things that the fans don't always see so it's good so, so really uh, i mean we've talked about a few you know very good topics with this and i know obviously it's late in your evening so i don't want to be um taking up lots and lots of, of your time so really we talked about the fans and the last thing for me to say is for the fans you know it's for people watching this who are your supporters um and your you know loyal people who follow your fights who watch your fights who are watching this the last question really uh, like i say because it's late for you and i don't want to be you know keeping you like a long time okay. is for them because i've tried to pick questions for people who know about you and for people who don't and maybe it's you know it's new to them but for the people that do know you and they follow you and they watch your fights any of them are watching this uh what would you say to them what would be some words that you give to your fans and supporters please just as as the last question I would say to all the people who follow me and who will start to follow me, a big, big thank you. Uh, actually, people do not understand how big it is when uh, when you have like people following you, sending message when you don't know them and sending power. But it's like the best, uh, the best um, free things that people can do, like, like following you and giving like free free good thought or so thank you really thank you very much um as i mentioned as i say a few few minutes before it was a big deception this wbc fight and also i wanted to to win that title for for the people who follow me but i want to say like the adventure is not finished and uh I don't know if i will fight again in white eye but for sure bare nickel and probably out of MMA and as I said, let way. So I will continue to fight uh, hard and, and the way people like me to fight. Brilliant. Well, Champ, you know, once again, I know I said at the beginning, but, uh, you know, big thank you for your time, obviously taking time out of your evening, uh, taking time, you know, to share so many great things um, with people all over the world. And, uh, you know, once again, just a, a big, big thank you for coming on and I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a, yeah, it's a 50, 50. Thanks for your, for your time as well, because, uh, okay, it's later, uh, but uh, thank you for taking time in your day for me. Thank you very much. Absolute pleasure. So you have a good evening champ. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Simply Inspired YouTube channel and there'll be more videos coming soon.